Welcome everyone to our the Signal Lunchtime Toastmasters. Uh, my name is Scott Nolan. I'm today's Toastmaster slash brainchild for this very atypical meeting that we're going to be having. Um, and as I had mentioned a minute ago, if you came here looking to see what a regular Toastmasters meeting is like, you're going to have to come back another time. Uh, what we're doing instead today is we are going to have a mock trial, nay, the mock trial, to determine one of the society's greatest questions. Here's how uh, this is going to work. We have a, a judge who is Kinga. Wave hi to everyone, Kinga. And she's also going to serve... She is not only going to preside over our mock trial, but she's also going to be our timer. And during different parts of the trial, there's going to be a certain amount of time that people can talk and or ask questions. And she will be raising the, do you want to show them what you have? That's okay. This is the green one. Okay. This is the yellow one. And this would be the red one. Okay. Our attorneys, we have uh, Ted as our prosecuting attorney and Brian as our defense attorney, will have set amounts of time in their opening statements, which are one minute, uh, for questioning a, their witness, which is three minutes of asking questions, and then the cross examine immediate cross examination for two minutes. And then at the end, they will have two minutes to give closing statements. So you guys, and we talked about this right before this call, so you know the amount of time you guys have. Do any of you have any questions as far as timing? You're pretty clear on that? Okay, so just like a trial, we are going to, I'm going to, uh, once I finish giving the setup, I'm going to give a proper introduction to today's case. Uh, we will begin the court proceedings with one minute opening remarks from each of our attorneys, first the prosecuting attorney, then the defense attorney. Then the prosecuting attorney will call to the stand three different witnesses where the prosecuting attorney will ask questions. The defense attorney will also get a chance to cross-examination. Then the defense will also have three witnesses. It's flipped, it's a court case like on the television or in the movies. Uh, at the end, each lawyer will have a two-minute closing statement. Then our jury will have a chance to, during this, during throughout all of this, our jury will be listening in, and then we'll be sending their uh, their decisions out to. Um, oh, there's Laura. I knew we were missing someone. And there's Sayoko. Hey, I, I got to do all this again. Yes? No? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll catch on. She'll catch on. Okay. Um, and then you can send your messages directly to Kinga, and King, Kinga will then um, give the ruling. Any questions on, uh, on how this is going to work? So during the trial, um, once the prosecutor and the defense attorney speaks, can we as jurors constantly message the judge on our opinion or can we just ask questions? I will, I will leave that up to the judge. I think the judge is probably, Judge Kinga is probably going to be busy kind of timing and making sure that the lawyers behave themselves. Um, so maybe, maybe you <laughs> can, uh, you can direct message maybe the other jurists, but maybe hold off until the end to kind of with your final um, your final thoughts to and wait till the end. I don't know. What do you? I'll, I'll kind of defer to Kinga on that. Does that sound good to you? You, you may have enough going on. So I think you message either defending lawyer or prosecuting lawyer with your question they have to ask for permission to ask the question. Okay. 
Okay. And so normally, I don't think juries really ask any questions. They just listen. Yeah. In the, so, yeah, no questions. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. It's my first time, and I'm quite excited because Suits is my favorite. <laughs> uh, this is our first yeah, time doing this, so it's all good. <laughs> awesome. So, Jake is in jury, uh, and who else is in jury along with me? Uh, Sioko, who just joined us, and um, may need, you guys might need to message her directly to kind of fill her in on the, on the jury role. Gotcha. So, All right. Okay. Uh, because, yeah, no problem. If anyone else had any other questions, then I'm going to uh, get started because we've got, uh, as I said, we got a pretty packed agenda. Any other questions? Let's begin. <clears throat> Here is the plaintiff, Frank Paul Randolph Humphrey Jr., owner and operator of Humphrey's Historic Hot Doggery. Humphrey applied to relocate his popular hot dog stand in Port Haven's Historic District. But the Board of Selectmen denied his claim because a hot dog isn't a sandwich. He's suing for dietary discrimination. And here comes the defendant. The Port Haven Board of Selectmen say they have a long-standing ordinance honoring their founder, Don Juan Hoagie, by only allowing sandwich shops in the historic district. And when it comes to being a sandwich, a hot dog just doesn't cut the mustard. <laughs> the people are not actors. The case is fake, but the drama is real. This is Toastmaster Court. All rise. Toastmaster Court is now in session. Judge Kinga presiding. Thank you, everybody. Please sit down. Um, uh, thank you for bringing this case, Scott, to my attention. I think we can officially open the, the case with an opening statement. Dear ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I will show you beyond a shadow of a kraut that a hot dog is in fact a sandwich. My client, Frank, Randolph, Frank Paul Randolph Humphrey Jr. has created a solid business that has served as a staple in his town. He has brought joy for over 42 years. That's a lot of years in hot dog years. He has established a 4.3 rating on Yelp and a 4.4 rating on Google with over 2,445 views. He's just trying to meet us in the middle and find some common ground to continue his journey of serving delicious Frankfurters. Now, the Board of Selectmen has smashed his hopes and dreams and is trying to ruin, ruin a perfectly good Frank with something like mayo because it's, he's just full of baloney. Stand up not for, what, for hot dogs, but the American dream, a cold Coke, or for the minority that prefer a Pepsi because we're not here to judge anyone, and all the goodness that comes along with summer, fireworks, and a nice foot-long hot dog with the works. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian's case is as soft as a scrumptious fresh potato bun, except he's all carbs and no meat. Over this next hour, you if you originally thought a hot dog was not a sandwich, you'll have some mustard on your face. Objection. He's gone over his minute of time, please. Thank you. Oh. The prosecution would like you to believe that this is a laughing matter, and it is not. Our country is founded on individual freedoms. Does Frank have a right to open a restaurant that sells a hot dog? Yes. He obviously has that right, but his rights to open a restaurant that sells hot dogs cannot trample upon the rights of the people around him. The city has weighed the rights of both individuals to determine whose right is more important. The rights of the restaurants that do, that do serve sandwiches 
are more important than the rights of individuals. We're going to hear a lot of terms, but at the end of the day, the government has decided what is a sandwich. And a hot dog does not meet the definition of a sandwich as defined by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Thank you. Well, my first witness, Frank Paul Randolph Humphrey Jr. He is the owner of Humphrey's Historic Hot Doggery. Now, this is unbelievable that the Board of Selectmen would deny your case when the town is named after Duan Juan Hoagie. We all know that a hoagie, unlike a subway, consists of one bun, just like a hot dog bun, not split like the jury will be split in this clear cut case and is in fact a sandwich. Tell us how you started your business and what calling a hot dog a sandwich would mean to you, your clients and your way of life. Thank you. Uh, well, it was actually my dad, Frank Sr., who actually started it. Yeah. At that time, uh, I was just a kid then, but then I, so I became known later as Little Frank, and then my dad was became Frank Senior, but uh, most people just called him Frank and call me Little Frank. Uh, actually, my wife gave me that name. I'm not sure why, but it was had nothing to do with the hot dog store. But um, yeah, anyways. It was really his dream to create the hot dog business, and he, unfortunately, he he died over three years ago. We were going to have a contest, a hot dog eating contest, and he choked to death during the training for that, and so the contest never happened. I'm sorry to hear that is that is terrible. Did he go down saying that a hot dog was in fact a sandwich? Yes, he did. It was his dream to start this hot dog, and he he always called it a sandwich as, as long as I can remember. That's just what we called them. We called them sandwiches. Yeah. And in fact, if somebody doesn't call it a sandwich, you can pretty much assume that they're asking for a hot dog, not just the meat, but they're asking the full bun and everything, right? Yes. So we because just... if they're not asking, if they don't ask for the sandwich, that's okay. Like we understand that it's, you don't have to say sandwich in the name, but we all know it's a hot dog sandwich. It's implied that when someone orders a hot dog, that they are ordering a hot dog sandwich. And right. unless they specifically ask to not have any bread with the hot dog, then, then we just. Give and in them fact, if you were to serve them just a hot dog with no bun and said, here's your hot dog, you'd probably lose some customers and lose your ratings. Am I? Um, that's correct. Uh, we would probably ask them to leave and not come back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, prosecuting attorney, um, defense attorney, you may uh, start your cross-examination. First, I'd like to uh, say my condolences to the loss of your father, Frank. Uh, the first question I would like to ask is, what is the definition of a hot dog versus a frankfurter? Well, we don't really make that distinction. If someone orders a frankfurter, we, we assume that we mean a, a hot dog. Oh, uh, so... Uh... One, I, I appreciate that you are willing to admit your ignorance about what is a frankfurter. A frankfurter is very much a classical definition of a hot dog from the German city of Frankfurt. It's a sausage from that region. It is a mild flavored sausage. And if you are not able to show the distinction between that and the legal definition of that, a hot dog is not a frankfurter. So my question to you is how can we consider you to be an expert 
on what is a hot dog when you're willing Jackson, to use he's not that saying term. He's no, I'm asking him a question. If you're not willing to show the distinction of the significance of a hot of a sausage from the town of Frankfurt with whatever you're serving. <sighs> I only know what my dad did, senior. What is your father's uh, official, like, subject matter expertness? What is his title? What is his decision in being able to define what is a hot dog versus a sandwich? What is a frankfurter? Should we be talking to your dad right now and not you? I'm sorry, defense lawyer. I think that is abusing of the witness. Please I, ask another question. No problem. I actually have no further questions for him. For my next, for my next witness, hopefully he's available. Scott. Oh, all right. Perfect. I'm going to call up Scott Nolan Sr., the linguistics uh, Miriam Webster. Uh, yes, thank you. Actually, my name is Nigel Winehouse. It is spelled just like it sounds. Sir, I'm going to show you a, a screen here. Just tell me if you could see it. Do, it do is we... uh, coming up now. This is uh, is labeled Exhibit A. Perfect. Have you ever seen this screen before? This this. Maybe you can Me. define for us what a sandwich is and. Yeah, Objection, this exhibit is not cited. I do not know where you got this from, and it was not presented to me in advance so that I could prepare for this. I well, allow I, it. This seems pretty straightforward. I'll allow it. Well, this here, what we're, we're seeing here is a, uh, a flow chart uh, showing the different uh, configurations for a sandwich. Uh, no, starting on one end from one slice all the way to four slices, though I, uh, I have to admit that uh, I'm not familiar with the heart attack sandwich arrangement. I'm not sure what that involves. It sounds uh, a little dangerous for me. Sure. Well, uh, Nigel, if you could please explain to us what exactly is a sandwich? I'd be happy to. I uh, and just for for establishing my credentials, I am the senior. I am a senior linguist, and I am the managing editor of uh, the letter S Zone One at Merriam-Webster, which you may recognize as America's leading provider of language information. Been in operation for over 180 years. Uh, the etymology of sandwich is actually quite interesting. There are two long-standing definitions for the word sandwich, the first being a noun, being, and here I'm quoting directly from Merriam-Webster, two or more slices of bread or a split roll having a filling in between. The other, of course, is the transitive verb, which is calling for the insertion or enclosion of something usually between two things of another equal or character. So, what you're trying to get at is it doesn't matter how many slices there are. It's the fact that something's in between something. Uh, that, that might be a little bit simplistic, but yes, I mean, it is the definition in Merriam-Webster, uh, which has been a longstanding definition uh, as far as the noun is, is actually quite straightforward. It's two or more slices of bread or a split roll having a filling in between. I don't think I have any other further questions. It sounds like a hot dog is, in fact, a sandwich. Uh, objection. He's making a statement, not asking a question. Uh, for the benefit of all of us here, can you define a hot dog for me? The actual hot dog. Now, I have to confess that uh, it is outside of my zone. Hot dog would actually fall under the letter H, and I am responsible for the letter uh, oh, No problem. So according but, to Marion Webster, the definition of a hot dog is... A frankfurter. Uh, let him answer typically... the question. No, 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 no. He said it's outside his realm, so I'm providing him with the definition so that he can be aware of it. A frankfurter with a typically mild flavor that is heated and usually served in a long split roll. Would you state that that is the definition of Marion Webster's? I can provide you with a link to show that statement. Well, 
I would uh, have to see the link with the statement to to uh, confirm that information. But if okay. that is what my colleague and uh, that is what my colleague in the uh, H department had to say. I, I also then... would like to point you to your colleague in the F department because the definition of a frankfurter is a cured cooked sausage that may be skinless or stuffed in casting. Would you agree with that definition? That without having seen it in front of me here, oh, we have it right here. Yes. Excuse me. And let me let me uh, assess this uh, myself. So I, I yes. think the question I'm having here, we've agreed that a hot dog is a frankfurter, and we're agreeing that a frankfurter is a sausage. Is this an accurate statement? I would say that it is accurate when you're talking thank, about. Thank you. I have no further questions. Or I have no further questions. I have no further questions. Thank you. I'm all, I'm all set. Yes, you are. For my final witness, I'll call. Sorry. I, for my final witness, I'll call up Arula Childs, TV host. Now that's some good eats. Arula, it sounds like you've traveled the world and tasted quite a bunch of sandwiches, including hot dogs. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your experience and what makes you an expert in the field of hot dogs. As well, yeah, yeah, so as you can see my last name, I, my great aunt was Julia Child. I was able to travel quite a bit with her and learned early. I'm a culinary art specialist. I have many restaurants and I'm assuming all of you know my show. Now that's some good eatings. So Arula, can you give me an example of some of the sandwiches you've eaten? I know, I think you have some quite fast experience. And so maybe you can indulge us with some of that. Well, sometimes the, the sandwich is a little low for me, but if I do choose to eat one, I would choose the panini and that's my favorite. You can put protein in it. You can put various fillings. And of course you can heat it up and make it more delicious with lots of butter because butter is the key to everything for good eatings. We all love, our, love buttered buns, but let's stick to the case at hand, the frankfurter or hot dog or whatever we want to define it. A man is at stake of losing his business. He's not able to continue in this oppression that is happening as he tries to expand and show everyone the world of his good eats. So please explain to us that this man who is trying to share his good eats with the world and is caught that is between leading the witness I, I'm, I'm sorry I okay well i'm just trying to say uh here we go um is a hot dog a sandwich in the culinary art world it is a sandwich and this is why it has bread there's a filling of some sort which is usually a protein let's not forget about the vegans it can be even a tofu dog for that matter and there's various spreads that you can put on and other fillings like maybe sauerkraut for example so anytime there's a sandwich it doesn't matter if the bread has things on top like pizza we won't go there today or it's between two slices of bread which is very common or there's a split bun for the hot dog bun so in my world, anything that's encased in bread in any form is a sandwich when there's protein and fillings and spreads on them. So I'm just going to show you exhibit B. Would you call this a sandwich? Most definitely, yes. And there's no major difference between that and a hot dog? Correct. Cool. Uh, anything else that you would like to tell the ladies of the jury about hot dog sandwiches or anything else that you've tasted in your journey? Mm. Well, with my many restaurants that are open, we chose not to do sandwiches for this reason, because in many states, especially New York and Objection, California. Objection, they've run out of time. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Miss Childs, one, I'm a huge fan of your show. Um, I would like you to autograph my DVD copy after this grilling that I'm about to give you. Um, happy to. Yeah, oh, excellent. The question I have is quite simple. We're talking about what is a hot dog. When you go to a baseball game and someone says hot dogs, hot dogs, or walking around the stands with a big tin box, what would you anticipate getting? 
I'm not sure if I've been to many baseball games because usually we're in the box and it's much different up there. But from what I can see from a top looking below, it's actually um, in, has aluminum foil with the bun and the hot dog. And people do say hot dog, but you know, a lot of people ask for. No, 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 no. We're not asking for clarification. All the time. We're not asking for clarification. Tissue. If you were at a game and someone was walking around saying hot dogs, hot dogs, and they handed you exhibit B, would you have received a hot dog? So you're asking me the last exhibit that was shown to me. Well, I would have gotten a hot dog sandwich, but not that sandwich at exhibit, exhibit B because it has different fillings. So you're, you're arguing that exhibit B is not reflective of a hot dog, correct? No, I'm not saying that. Why am I saying yeah, no, that? That's exactly B. what you just said. It said exhibit B is not a hot dog. I did not say that. You're putting words in my mouth. Well, I am saying you're asking that a hot dog sandwich is a sandwich. And that a hot dog would look very different. It's a different kind of protein than exhibit B, but it's still a protein filling. And that exhibit B also had various fillings and spreads that might be different than a hot dog. It's very common for ketchup or mustard or relish, for example. Um, so both are sandwiches, but they're not, one's not a hot dog. It's a different protein that I saw at exhibit B. So you're saying a sandwich is defined oh, objection. by- you, Objection, he's out of time, he's out of time. No, we, we did get run out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Alora Verifen. Um, we can start with the witnesses on the defense side. The defense calls the first witness, Mr. Matt Captain, case manager of the United States Department of Agriculture. Matt, what is the USDA's definition of a sandwich? Well, sandwich, we defined it at the USDA as a product that must contain at least 35% of cooked meat or no more than 55, no more than 50% bread. Um, and usually a typical closed face sandwich is going to have two slices of bread um, or the top and bottom section of a sliced bun. In a traditional hot dog, how much does a bun weigh? Um, the average bun, I believe, is around 2.9 ounces. And how much does the actual Frankfurter sausage within a hot dog, how much does that weigh? Average hot dog is going to weigh around 1.6 ounces. So it is within your official opinion as a member of the USDA that because a hot dog meat protein, the Frankfurter, is well less than 50% of it, it cannot be classified as a sandwich. Correct. That's all I have. Thank you. Matt, the USDA, if I'm not mistaken, has at one point in time determined that ketchup is a vegetable. If a ketchup is a vegetable, how much actual tomato is in ketchup? How does that work? How much tomatoes in ketchup? I couldn't tell you exactly the number. I have to look at some stuff. So you're an expert on frankfurters, which also it's quite interesting that you came in last minute and is a substitution for Liz, but we won't go that far. However, you conveniently don't know the, dif the difference between ketchup and, and tomatoes, but- No, I'm actually a case manager at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Got okay, got it. So just because we don't call something by its proper name doesn't mean it's actually true. And actually, Technically, tomato is a fruit. No one asked for a fruit salad uh, with extra tomato. And did you know that berry is a, a banana is a berry? Sure, I don't run around telling people that the proper way to eat a berry is from the bottom, but that shouldn't make you go ape wild and prevent a banana shop from opening just because it looks like a telephone. That, that would be a badgering the witness. Would you okay. please ask a question? Thank you. Sure. So going along my typical lines of trying to figure out if it's a, a hot dog is a sandwich, why is it that the USDA is also torn between how New York State is taxing a hot dog, which they are taxing a hot dog as a sandwich, versus you just calling it a sandwich? And just so you know, a man's business is at stake here. So just trying to get to the bottom of 
why is it that a hot dog on your end may not be de deemed a sandwich? And has you actually gone out and made a statement that a hot dog is not a sandwich? Yeah, there's no definition of an actual hot dog in the in the directory. But as I said, there's the um, certain guidelines we have of the 35% cooked and the 55 and the 50% bread. So based on those guidelines, it's not meeting the definition of a sandwich. So it's not actually defined Thank just you. in gender. Thank you. We, we just ran out. Thank you so much. Um, we can introduce the second witness. Uh, I would like to call Eric, the chair of the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council to the stand. Eric, let, let's get right to the root of the question here. Can you describe how you feel when someone describes a hot dog as a sandwich. Mm. Yes, well, thanks for having me. I'm glad I'm part of this. I have served as the chair of the Hot Dog and Sausage Council since 2010. After a very illustrious career as a hot dog vendor at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, if you were between the sections 300 and 330 and needed a hot dog, I was your guy. I would serve anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 hot dogs at each game to my clients. 82 home games plus playoffs. I'm serving 1,500 hot dogs per game. Do you want to do the math? No? Okay, well, I'll tell you. That's over 150,000 hot dogs I'm serving each year. I was a hot dog vendor for over 20 years. I have served over 3 million hot dogs. Now, can I ask you a question? How many of those people sitting between sections 300 and 330 raised their hand, beer in their left, saying, hey, sandwich guy, throw me a sandwich. Do you know how many people asked me that question over my 20-year career? Zero. Not one person yelled for a sandwich. You know why? Because I wasn't carrying sandwiches. So when you ask me how I feel when someone calls a hot dog a sandwich, well, I have to ask you. What would you feel like if someone called a Kanisha hamburger? Or if someone called a hoagie a hero? Well, if you live in Philly, that's a big problem. So I am upset at this whole premise because it would discredit my entire 20 year career as a hot dog vendor. And it would also discredit my past 12 years where I've been defending the point that a hot dog is not a sandwich and ketchup should never go on a hot dog. Sad is how I would leave it. I, I think I can speak for everyone here today when I say thank you for your service. No further thank questions. Mr. National Hot Dog Sausage Council Chair, I ask you, what is this? A rich person with too much time on their hands. Yes, but what is, what is the object you're seeing? Being an electric vehicle. Electric vehicle. Some may even call it a Tesla. But the point is, it is a car that brings you from point A to point B. Now you may say, well, it has an electric engine versus an internal combustion engine. But at the end of the day, the Tesla is still a car. Just like We're a hot dog is still a sandwich. So I ask you, if somebody were to say, throw me a hot dog, and you only gave them the hot dog with no bun, would they be just as upset if you called it a sandwich? I'm gonna turn that analogy on you. Where do you buy a car? Where do, what are you, the attorney now? A car shop, dealer. You go to a car shop, buy a car. Sure. Where do you buy a sandwich? A sandwich From shop? A deli. a deli. I'll ask you. Like in New York, can you buy a hot dog at Katz's Deli? I'll answer that for you. You can't because you they may, only at sell some places, sandwiches. That is not always true. But back to you. I'm asking if somebody said, I want a hot dog, and you just literally gave them a hot dog on a plate, would they be pissed? Objection. If We've I, clarified that a hot dog is the bun and frankfurter. Frankfurter is the sausage that would go within a hot dog. If but I if served, I'll, answer the, question. A hot I'll dog. answer the question. If I served a deconstructed 
hot dog to a New Yorker in the 300 section, who, by the way, is not driving a Tesla. So I found that very insulting. He will take that deconstructed hot dog and throw it right back at my head. So he doesn't need to say that it's a sandwich, even though we all know it's a hot dog sandwich. If he asks for a hot dog, he will receive a hot dog. With I will put my 20 year career with on the that. bun as per the definition of a sandwich. I don't separate those Thank two. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, we don't separate the two. Perfect. Thank you. For my third and final witness, I'd like to bring up Leslie. She is a state vegan hot dog eating champion. Leslie, have you ever competed in a hot dog eating championship? Have. I'm have actually you, the state reigning champion. Thank you very much. Have you ever competed in a sandwich eating competition? I have. Is there one that you prefer versus another? Yes, I prefer the hot dog competitions much more than the sandwich competitions. Wait a minute. Why would you prefer one versus the other? Is there a substantial difference between the composition of eating a hot dog versus eating a sandwich? Absolutely. There's a significant difference from a competitive eating perspective, specifically around the strategy, regardless of what might be inside a sandwich, whether there's toppings or not, um, compared to a hot dog. So the first piece is in a hot dog, situation and a hot dog eating competition, you eat the items separately and you actually eat them very differently. So for example, as you are eating them, you separate all of the protein from the bread. And then generally, depending on the size of your mouth, you can eat more than one of the protein at a time in very large bites. And you follow it up by taking your bread and you dip it in water, and then you eat the bread separately from the protein. From a sandwich perspective, you eat very, very small bites and you eat everything together. So it's just little, little, tiny, tiny bites that you just kind of swallow, 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 swallow. There's no break in the volume of what's going in or the type of what's going in like there is with hot dogs. Now, is the reason why you would separate the bread from the protein when eating a hot dog because the bread content of a hot dog is above 50%, thus putting in violation of the USDA's recommended guidelines of 50%. I would agree. There's a lot more denseness per se because of the volume of the bread, which is why you have to soak it if you're going to eat it. Otherwise, you would choke. So uh, the last thing I have to say, and I, I really think that everyone in the room means this. Thank you for your service today. <laughs> Leslie. My father gave his life so you can compete in those cars. Objection, objection. He is not on the stand. <laughs> Leslie, I would like to ask you, and I know you mentioned that you chose hot dog eating contests versus other sandwiches or other things, but there are other items that could be eaten in a constituted way where it's a one solid item, such as maybe a sausage or a bratwurst or any other name that may come out that Brian may talk about. So I ask you, why is it that we're saying this is not a sandwich when in fact the meat content in the middle is just what we're talking about for a competition? I'm confused by your, your question, Ted, because I would argue or I would point out that your meat content is going to be solid in a hamburger. So it, it's this it's the same kind of situation where you'd have to look at how you would eat it from a hamburger perspective, even though it's a solid protein, you still eat it together with the bun in small pieces compared to a hot dog, which you'd eat bigger chunks of just the protein and separate the bread. So it sounds like it's just the competition of however you want to eat it, but it doesn't really mean that it's a sandwich or not. In fact, you could be eating, I don't know, ice cream banana splits, and you take the banana, eat the banana first, and then you eat ice cream, and how many banana splits can you get down, right? Oh, I would disagree, Ted. I think it's really important to understand the definition and the content of what a hot dog is. 
Otherwise, if you're going to put everything into a sandwich category, it would be like saying that Michael Jordan was the greatest baseball player. I mean, essentially, you can put him in a baseball uniform, but he definitely did not fool any of us when he went on to the field. Well, my next question is, I know that you, un I understand that by eating lots of things, it has made you this expert in whether a hot dog is a sandwich. But I brush my teeth uh, vigorously back and forth every day. Does that make me an expert as a dentist? Uh, objection, he's running out of time. I can I actually allow for the witness to Go answer ahead. this question. So um, Ted, I, I guess I'm concerned um, Brushing your teeth doesn't require any sort of uh, skill or strategy per se or training. Um, to be a competitive eater, I have to train my body in order to be able to consume large amounts of food within small amounts of time. And I also have to make sure that I consume it in a way that my stomach can handle all of the bread, which is why you have to use the water for the hot dogs. The hot dog sandwich, got it. Thank you very much. How about um, we will move to the closing statements. Is it, uh, sorry, is it prosecution first? Yes, okay, sure. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah the prosecution. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fellow members of the jury, just because we some, call something by its proper name doesn't mean it's not true. A tomato is a fruit. No one asked for fruit salad with extra tomato. Banana is a berry. Sure, I don't run around telling people that the proper way to open a berry is from the bottom, but this shouldn't make you go ape wild and prevent a banana shop from opening up just because it looks like a telephone. Hello, orange, orange, orange guy, I didn't say banana. But just because it's not true doesn't mean it's not its roots. Tines, scientists smarter than me or any other hot dog determine what the clear cut rules of a berry or a fruit are. But just because us normal Franks don't like to call a tomato a fruit because it feels weird, there's no, no denying it, just like there's no de denying a hot dog is a sandwich. Now, my friend, Frank Paul Randolph Humphrey Jr., sorry, my client, he is, his business is at stake and we need to help him and support him. This is an entrepreneurial country. Just because we may call something a hot dog or a sandwich doesn't mean that we should deny him the opportunity to open his sandwich shop, which is the hot dog. He just happens to sell hot dogs. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. This is one condiment conspiracy. Do not trash his dreams like that last bit of hot dog with the little thing that hangs out that no one wants to eat. Now, commitment may be hard, Buns are soft, but a hot dog is surely a sandwich. Thank you. I really do Thank feel you, for Frank. He wants to have the dream of opening a hot dog sandwich. And you know what the great thing about what he's trying to do here? He's trying to live that American dream. But unfortunately for him, he can't open his store in the historic downtown district because he operates a hot dog shop. He's admitted as much that this is a hot dog shop. Luckily, there's many other places in town where he can go and open a hot dog shop. The downtown district is reserved for sandwiches. We as a society have the ability to create zoning laws to state this is where we put industrial, this is where we put commercial, this is where I put residential. We do so so that people can live in an area and know what to expect. If we allow a non-sandwich location to open up in a sandwich district, we are not going to be doing the sandwich district service. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're talking about here. The prosecution that's failed to show in any way other than my dead father says it's this thing. My dead father says a lot of things. He said no one ever landed on the moon. Does that mean that someone has never landed on the moon? Think of to your fathers and all the things they've told you, which aren't accurate. 
at the end of the day, I really do feel pain for Frank because he wants to open a sandwich shop. He just doesn't know better. He doesn't understand that if he wants to open a sandwich shop in the historic district, he actually has to sell a sandwich. Thank you. Thank you. Now that we have uh, heard the prosecution and defense, I'm not sure what Bailey does. Postmaster, a little help, side, side note. So, so while oh. Jake and Sonia are gathering the thoughts about what we've heard today, um, we have a one-minute recess so I can uh, consult with Scott. Yeah, so, so at this point, uh, the members of our jury, uh, and, and Sioko, that would include you too, will, uh, will message Kinga directly in the chat, which is down there, and uh, just choose her name. She is listed under, make sure I got this right, Kinga-judge slash timer, and you can go and tell her whether or not you believe a, uh, a hot dog is in fact a sandwich and phrase that however you want. You can put in explanations if you want. And then, uh, and then once you've uh, submitted your, your thoughts, um, then uh, Kinga will uh, report out the findings of the jury and, uh, and make judgment and pass her judgment. And then Kinga, depending on how it comes up, if they, if the jury and, and it is an agreement that a hot dog is a sandwich, then you're finding for the prosecution. And if you were fine, if they say it is not a sandwich, you're finding for the defense. Okay, I just got one jury, okay. Just one. And as we're waiting, I got to say uh, thank you all for the vigorous and passionate uh, arguments on either side. This was uh, this was highly entertaining. I have, I do have an official ruling. So um, the judge took a while deliberation. There was a lot of back and forth. They, they just had um, a lot of time to deliberate. And the decision is that a hot dog is still a sandwich. So prosecuting attorney, um, and uh, Frank, you are allowed to open the sandwich store. We will be appealing this to the next level, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I can give a, a time, timing uh, accounts as well, if you need me to. Um. No, that's okay. We were just, I was really more interested in, uh, for the purposes of today's meeting, just keeping things on track and making sure that everyone got a chance to talk and such. Uh, for, the, for, our, for our guests, uh, traditionally, the role of a timer would, why is my thing dinging? That's kind of weird. All right. Sorry. Uh, traditionally, uh, the timer would report out at the end of the meeting how long people spoke for. For the, sorry, my computer is freaking out. What are you doing? Dismiss, dismiss. Okay, hopefully that will do it. Um, I, sorry, I was completely, my computer just kept binging and binging and binging at me. So, uh, traditionally, the, the timer would report out how long everyone spoke for 
uh, for the purposes of today, I don't know that that's really necessary. Uh, but thank you all for participating in, in our very first mock trial. Uh, hopefully you had a good time and are not too uh, dejected if the, if the case did not go the way you had hoped. Uh, did anyone, I'm gonna open up the, the floor. Basically, anyone have any thoughts, comments, feedback uh, is this something that you'd like to see us, something you know, we'd like to see us try again, um, ways we can improve it? God, I would just like to say that this is really fun. You did a great job preparing this and, and setting it up um, on all ends. And, and obviously it was a fun debate, right? So it was a fun topic, but go ahead. I'll open up the floor. Thank you. Yeah, this was so much fun, time, guys. Thank you, thank you for inviting me, Leslie. And this was the first of a kind that I've ever attended. And it was so cool to watch you guys play out. <laughs> and then you were smiling all the while when you were giving your serious points too, and that was super funny. You can have fun with it. And so I was literally the whole week, I've been just trying to come up with more and more hot dog puns. And, and <laughs> This is cool. Great job. The different smart is really awesome to too. I would love to. I'd love to join the next meetings. Thank you. Please forward me the invite. It's not always like this, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs>